All right. <clears throat> and then, um, and then just in case we, we don't have enough time at the end. So Naomi, is there anything, uh, any announcements or anything that you want to say before I do the share screen? Uh, well, on Saturday, we have uh, from 10 to 11 o'clock, uh, the training for um, DEI. So that's the diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, so this is for membership chairs, club trainers, and presidents. The president elects can come too. But um, just some of the things that we think about DEI, uh, you, you think about age or ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, there's much more to DEI and it, it involves membership. And so that's why membership chairs are, are um, uh, welcome to come too, they're invited. But you guys as club trainers, uh, we'll, we'll see the overall picture of what the strategy is and what we could do if your club is willing on growing Rotary and, um, and making the club stronger. So you guys, the club trainers are so important to the club and continuity of the club and making it stronger. So thank you all for being here. Okay, you're good. All right, all right, here we go, gang. Hang on. Uh, let me move this thing over here. So, hang on, slideshow. Okay, hang on. I gotta, I gotta move my this little window over here. Okay, <clears throat> so tonight's uh, talk is a little bit is about continuity is the key, and continuity basically means to continue uh, doing something. Now, um, rot Rotary uh, is built on continuity. It depends on that, right? And so. <clears throat> Um, every time we think of something that, that is better, we, we um, uh, put that into the way in which we do things. And then we try to train people uh, to continue to do that um, in, our, in the next administration, next group of people, uh, new members that come into the club. Um, <clears throat> so our job as trainers is really about helping to promote continuity within our clubs. All right, so training has the greatest impact on continuity. So um, you guys that are in whatever kind of work that you do, you've received some training, right? So, um, you know, whether you're an electrician, you're a banker, you're a school teacher, uh, whatever occupation you may have, it, it all um, is dictated, or your effectiveness is really dictated um, on the training that you receive. So. Uh, when you look at the continuity of any um, group, any business, um, even even families, um, I know at our in, in our family, um, we we call continuity uh, uh, traditions, uh, sometimes rituals. Um, you know, this is the way we've done it for years and years. So that that sense of continuity is really important. So if you're thinking, um, if you're sitting there wondering, or if your president sent you here and said, hey, "I want you to be a club trainer." and you're wondering, um, what is my job? Uh, your job is to provide continuity for your club. Okay, so every time there is a change of leadership, um, we lose some continuity. So uh, part of your job um, as the club trainer is to make sure you don't lose much continuity. Now, even at the district level, it's really difficult because we have a district governor every year and then when that person's year is over, then we have a completely <clears throat> new district governor. And so just when you're getting to learn the job, you guys as pre presidents um, might already experience this, is that um, your year is over. So <clears throat> who's in charge of making sure that there's, there's a smooth transition in the leadership? It's really the club trainer. Now, um, Every club has a club trainer, whether they know they have a club trainer or not, uh, there's a club trainer in every club. And um, as I go through the description of it, you're gonna, you're gonna in imagine in your head, oh, okay, this is the person. Like, like in our club for years and years, <clears throat> um, it was Audrey Wilson in our club, okay? And Audrey Wilson was like the mother of our club. Right, she was just had been there long enough, knew everything. She was the go-to person. Okay, hang on, let me see. Uh, Naomi, I think there's people in the waiting room. You see them? 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. And so, so um, our person, Audrey Wilson was really, she was the go-to person and she was the person that helped build the, built the culture of our club because she kept the continuity going. If anybody wanted to know something, oh, how do we do this? Where's this? Okay, uh, how, do, how do we um, induct a new person? Um, you know, uh, when we were going to uh, induct our, our, new, our new president or um, have the inauguration, what is that supposed to look like? What do our socials look like? Okay, so <clears throat> she was our continuity person probably for about 15 years. And so she sort of assumed the role of club trainer, even though she didn't know she was that and nobody called her that. Um, but if you're that person, if you're kind of the go-to person for the club, yeah, you're the continuity person. That's what the club trainer is, okay? So continuity builds culture. And what is culture? Culture is the way your club does stuff, okay? So like <clears throat> you have some people where the culture of their club is, um, you know, we do service projects every month. That's the culture of your club. We have a big, huge fundraiser and we give to, um, to uh, nonprofits locally in our area. That's the culture of your club. Um, maybe when it's foundation month, everybody comes, writes a big check. And maybe you're, the culture of your club is that everybody writes a super big check. Okay, so the, your, the continuity in your club, um, it's developed. It, it helps to develop the culture in your club. Okay, why is that important? Because culture, <laughs> determines, culture determines the behavior of your club, what things are done. Like, um, like you take Gail's club, for example, Waikiki. <clears throat> because Gail's been the club trainer for so long, <clears throat> she's, she's developed ways, a, <clears throat> a culture of, of doing things a certain way, of um, um, inducting people, of um, helping to get people, uh, new members, um, acquainted with what the club does. And so that helps to determine a culture of how people behave within that club. So if you have a, if you have a good club trainer, uh, somebody who's solid, somebody who understands that their job is to help promote continuity within their club, it's gonna be super effective. Okay, <clears throat> and then behavior, behavior, how your club behaves, the kinds of things they do, that dictates results. So right now, all through the district, the president elects are starting, we're starting to train them, right? So they're in their My Rotary now, in their, in their Club Central, and they're logging in, or they should be logging in, uh, their goals for the next year, okay? So <clears throat> whether or not they're gonna achieve those goals, it's gonna be dictated by your assistance in promoting continuity within your club. You know, <clears throat> the culture of your club dictates behavior and behavior dictates results, okay? So what I'm seeing in these, in these clubs um, district-wide is that the clubs that have the best continuity, they typically have the best results, okay? <clears throat> because they've created systems that <clears throat> help to get the results that they want, whether it's we're gonna do X amount of uh, service projects. We're gonna do one service project every month, okay? If that's something that's, that's already sort of set up, that's a, the part of the culture of your club, uh, then as a club trainer, you basically said, hey gang, it's our once a month uh, social um, service project. Um, if the culture of your club is, um, hey, <clears throat> during um, foundation month, we're all, gonna, we're all gonna sit down and we're either gonna write uh, a check for a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. Because that's our two biggest givers, right? A uh, hundred dollar givers and thousand dollar givers. So <clears throat> the clubs that have the best continuity have the best results. So um, that's something that um, it's important for you guys to think about as club trainers. Club trainer is the go-to person. So I was talking about Audrey Wilson, right? And so if, if the go-to person in your club is not the club trainer, and maybe you're in a club that doesn't have a club trainer, that's the person that's your club trainer. The person that basically has been around long enough, it's typically somebody who's been a past president or officer or a board member of some kind um, that basically knows um, how to help with continuity. So that's, that's your go-to person. 
Okay, <clears throat> so think about this one now. Club trainer can have a huge impact on membership stability. Okay, so not, not just the orientation of new members, okay, <clears throat> but, the, but the ability to keep members, to engage members um, in a way that keeps them members. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing a talk in some of the Rotary Clubs about uh, being a Rotarian for life and connecting people into their, their clubs. So I'm the club trainer for my club, obviously. So part of what I talk a lot about in our club is how do we engage people to keep them as members for life? Because, you know, we, we induct, we bring new members in, but, but typically we have either the same amount or maybe more of members leave. All right, so the club trainer can have a huge impact on membership stability. And we're gonna talk about that, or we're gonna kind of work on that in our breakout groups. Oops, okay. <clears throat> Club trainer can also impact future leadership development, right? Because it's typically that go-to person, whether it's you call them the club trainer or not, um, that sees uh, leadership potential uh, within a club, right? So if you have new members come in or, or maybe you have um, uh, members now that are at a point um, in their life, in their career, maybe they've had a really busy career and now they've retired and they have time and, you know, now they might want to um, take a leadership position in the club. Um, but a club's go-to person, which is typically the club trainer, uh, can see that, right? And so now it's not just about seeing, um, you know, getting somebody to be the PE, but trying to line up leadership, you know, over two, three, four, even five years. And why would you want to do that? You would want to do that because it builds continuity in the club. Okay, so remember I always used to say, if Yoda was a Rotarian, uh, Yoda would be the club trainer. Okay, so, um, so here's what we're gonna do today. And I wanna I want talk about these three things. So we're gonna, we're gonna do breakout groups and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk a little bit about this, right? So <clears throat> part of the issue with club trainers is that one, you know, a lot of clubs, in, you know, um, until recently didn't really have a club trainer. And then if they had a club trainer, wasn't really sure what a club trainer was supposed to do. Okay, <clears throat> me personally, because you know I'm supposed to do this, I'm the district trainer. Um, <clears throat> what do we do within your club to sort of elevate this position of the club trainer? Because for me, you, know, you, can, you can have a club president and they can be a really good club president at the end of their year as club president, they're, they're gone. So if you start with a new president, all right, how do you build continuity in that? And it's really the, the club trainer that can see that, that can assist and can help with that. Um, so within the club, um, I, I don't know how you guys are viewed within your club, um, that, that club trainer position, um, but it, it has to take a level of importance where, where in some, um, like in our club, um, club trainers part of the board and so they're involved in the in the decision making and what is happening at the highest levels of the club all right so the the next uh, item we want to talk about we're going to talk about three things in our breakout rooms is that what what can what can club trainers do to help um, stabilize uh, membership on the front end and on the back end, you know, helping people find their purpose, find what they like to do. I mean, on the front end, uh, you know, we should be putting a lot of effort and time into those people, but also on the back end, even some of these Rotarians that have been, you know, in our club that, you know, maybe we don't really pay much attention to them. They've been there, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Um, you know, they still want to feel like uh, they're, um, active and they're doing meaningful service and um, they're contributing to the success of the club. Okay, and then <clears throat> the last thing I wanna talk about is, uh, so what is my role, the club trainer, um, in the transition of leadership? So we're, we're getting ready, uh, Sandy and I, our new class of uh, president elects, um, we're in that sort of uh, pre-pets mode where we're getting people ready to go to pets. 
and then our pets are scheduled, um, you know, the first week of March. And so after that, we're going to focus on, on the transition, on getting the new president ready so that by the time, um, you know, they're, they're um, inaugurated as the club president or they take over the gavel on July 1, uh, that they have a, f a full idea and have had a chance to really get in the driver's seat and drive the plane uh, so that the thing can, you know, be up and off the ground. And so how I see it is the key people that are involved in that <clears throat> is the president, the president-elect and the club trainer, those three people. And, um, and we'll talk more about that as the, as the coming months go in the things that you can do specifically to help the transition uh, of leadership. Um, one of the things that came up, um, you know, our, our incoming uh, president-elect, a uh, guy named Keith Greer, um, he's only been in our club about, about two years now, okay? And he's gonna be the president-elect. So when I met with him and asked him, so um, Keith, um, what are some, what's something or some, some of the things that we can do uh, to help you in this transition? And he said, you know, um, I haven't been a member of the club uh, that long. And so I don't really know uh, a lot of the members very well, all right? So one of the things we're gonna do is have a get to know Keith day as one of our meetings. And so um, our club members can come and um, Keith can talk about himself. We, everybody tell their rotary story. And it's really just kind of a, um, let's kind of get to know each other uh, better because in a lot of cases, um, you know, our president elects may, may not know our club members uh, very well. Okay, so uh, any questions about that? So I'm gonna stop this share, get us all back in. Um, I'm gonna get you guys in, let's see how many we have, 25, okay. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna split up into like five breakout rooms um, and we're gonna uh, go over these, those three questions, right? How can we elevate the position of uh, 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 club trainer? Uh, what can we do to stabilize our membership? And then uh, what is gonna be um, my role in the transition of leadership? So um, get somebody uh, within your group to kind of be the recorder, take down a few notes. Um, we're going to give you at 724 right now. I'm going to give you about uh, 20 minutes. And, you know, with breakout rooms, everybody spends about 20 minutes. It's like, you know, da 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 da, -da. Okay, so, so uh, cut that down a little short and then so that you can kind of get to the questions. Okay, and we'll come back in about 20, 25 minutes and chat a little bit about it. I'd like to hear what you guys are going to have to say. All right, any uh, questions about that before we rock and roll out of here? How do we break out? How do we know a group we go with? Uh, well, I'm doing it automatically. Actually, as we speak, I, okay. I, uh, I have you guys set up and then I'll, uh, there'll be, a, um, there'll be a, a little message on your screen. It'll say, uh, press this button to join group three or whatever group uh, you're gonna be in. Okay, thank so you. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it ran randomly uh, because random is way more fun. Okay, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll drop into your groups and see how you guys are doing. Uh, but thanks a lot and just hang on and here we go. Okay. Would you like to go to a room? Uh, Sandy, what is that you put in the chat? What is that? Uh oh, she left. Did, she, did you see what she put? What is that? Oh, five what? Oh, I don't know. What does that look like? Beats me. <laughs> okay. Know. All right. Let's see. Break our rooms. Okay, so you're going to go to to a breakout room. Uh, I don't. I don't have to. I don't know. Hey, by the way, you know um, goals. You don't do goals until about May, because the PE should be talking to the board about the goals together. Okay. 
So Rotary Club Central goes, uh, you want to look for the end of me. Okay, bye. Go to room number one. You're going? Okay, bye.
But anyway, the Hi there. person who planned it, the person who planned this gathering looked at the Zoom attendance for the last several months and noticed that there were two people who had not been participating. Mm -hmm. So she called them first to say, what day would work for you to go you know, out to dinner? So in other words, yes. we were aware of the fact that, that they needed to be kind of pulled back into the loop, so to speak. So I think that that's one of the ways that our club has been dealing with um, you know, being able to sustain our members and keep people in the loop. Did that work? It did. It oh, did work. Mm -hmm. And they had a wonderful time. And, you know, I, I got feedback from them saying that they, you know, they loved the event. They sat at a really nice table that was close to outside. It was, it worked out. It was good. Terrific. Mm -hmm. But were they were you able to get them to come um, to the Zoom meetings though? After? Well, we did, we haven't had one. This was last Friday. Oh, the okay. next Zoom meeting we have is next next week on the twenty second. So we'll see, hmm. we'll see. But I I believe that I believe that that first part, or at least the initial thing that we did, was successful. Hmm. You know, it's really hard to stay connected. Yeah. When you can't get together and you, you know, yeah. our, our projects, we've been doing things, but it's mm. all been socially distanced and masks and everything. It's, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as, um, as we'd like it to be. Yeah. So have you so, guys experienced like, uh, like a portion of your club that's since we went, since you've gone virtual has just sort of dropped off? Not really. Not really. We yeah. all of our people have been uh, attending the Zoom meetings. Yeah, yeah. So we're yeah. we're blessed in that way, but they haven't always been connecting with other things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we we did a a meal for the homeless folks at Thanksgiving, and we didn't really have participation from everybody. Of course, that's a little bit of a hard thing. Not everybody wants to do that anyway. Yeah. Well, I found well, I that think... there's a handful of, of older members in our club um, who are not familiar with Zoom, even though yeah. it's really easy. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not enough to just say, oh, well, all you have to do is click on the link. You yeah. have to really be there beside them and show them, you know, exactly what to do. Um, and and then there are a couple of members who uh, yeah. just don't want to do a Zoom meeting. They, they yeah. don't think it's safe. Um, this one lady, I kept on talking to her for at least two months and she finally said, okay, I'll try it. And she's been to every meeting since. Yeah. So it's just you you've just got to keep on keep after them you know it's it's almost like they're they're a kid and then you want to you have to you're teaching them how to do something uh, but it's i mean you you just got to accept that now you know with with uh, the situation we're in mm -hmm. everybody has different feelings about it so yeah. it's it's hard you know yeah, and they may not have a fifth grade grandchild next door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, if if I can sort of distill up or kind of boil up something, I guess an undergirding theme from what Marianne Heather's comment is. I think really the the club trainer becomes part of that, you know, in partnership with membership, in partnership with the president. Mm -hmm. um, you know that is both the kind of looking ahead as well as looking back, you know, being the connector to help spot trends, to help identify areas of need, whether it be to support membership or, you know, um, you know, help, help support and troubleshoot to get people engaged, you know, in those meetings. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, my kind of take on that, and I think a similar thread is just to think about, you know, how the club trainer can ennoble, um, the, the members new and, and 
uh, existing, you know, around kind of the purpose, the mission, um, you know, the accomplishments of Rotary and the club to really remind them this is, this is why we're doing what we do. Um, and, you know, for people who are looking for that, that sense of connection, that sense of purpose, um, and that value for their work, um, our job can be to help convey what that is connecting to both the district, Rotary International, um, and, you know, other areas where our, our impact multiplies and has real material benefit to people. Mm, right. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I think, well, like, uh, like in our club, we, we have, um, we probably lost, uh, not, not lost, but uh, have about 20% of our, our membership that just, you know, hey, I'm, I'll wait till we go back to in, mm -hmm. in person. And, and it's, it's some of our, you know, some of our older guys. Um, but the, but the other piece of it, is that we have picked up, um, you know, a couple of uh, new members that uh, said that they they would not have joined um, if it wasn't virtual. They just, you know, I mean, we, you know, we're we're Tuesday at noon, uh, which is not a, a real convenient time for for a lot of people. But um, you know, we we were able to pick up a couple of people who who said that, you know. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the lunch having, club having it online was was more convenient. Yeah, yeah the lunch clubs have, um, I think, are benefiting the most because we meet uh, Thursdays at noon. And, um, uh, you know, you don't have to leave your place of work. You yeah. don't have to mm -hmm. get in your car, find a place to park. And then yeah. because it, it takes easily an additional hour besides the hour for the meeting. Right. But with Zoom, you know, you can be anywhere yeah. and attend the meeting. Yeah, you can save money on the lunch too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've, <laughs> we've been aware of that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the positive things is our club has saved a lot of money because we're not we're not really spending any money on, on anything. We would, you know, we would the kind of normal expenses we would have, we don't we don't have them any, or we haven't been having them. So so that's been good. So, um, okay. So what, what, what about the transition in, uh, you know, in, in the new leadership and in, into the uh, president and elects that are, that are coming in? What, what do you think that uh, we as club trainers could, could do to help that? Well, even well first of all, we have to get a big truck to transport all this, the regalia. Okay. <laughs> flags um <laughs> boxes for for happy dollars ah I, so get a big truck <laughs> get a big truck yeah okay <laughs> does that get transferred from president to president yes well oh yes, my yes yes oh. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. okay yeah. well well, I think, well, I think the, I mean, kind of extending on that, I think really it's how is the, the trainer to kind of help set up the conversation for the, you know, for the, for the, you know, what are the key roles that the board yeah. needs? What are the, yeah. what are the key roles and where, you know, where were the pukas that emerged in the past year to kind of, you know, we need a little more of a lift here. We need a dedicated yeah. person focused to this because as a, as an additional assignment, it was onerous for the people that we have, um, you know, helping connect, uh, you know, if somebody's a first time secretary or first time treasurer, where there's a lot of important and, you know, kind of particular tact and tie duties, you know, making sure they feel supported, helping connect them, you know, to somebody who's experienced in that capacity in the district and another club um, to make sure that they feel supported. Um, you know, I think the, you know, and kind of helping, I mean, being the, 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 uh, I hate to use Dick Cheney as the <laughs> example, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I'm heading the vice presidential transition selection team and I've picked myself, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, being, being the person <laughs> that, you know, provides the, the, the outline for the plan, you know, in the transition, 
help set the club's expectations, help the new president be set up for success, you know, getting that um, training plan in place for the, you know, starting in July to get, you know, to take off where the club wants to revisit, you know, topics that need to be uh, given more prominence and attention consistently, and then highlight those areas of need, you know, that emerged during the past year that, you know, there's a hunger within the club to fill mm -hmm. from their knowledge and, and the connections they need help building. Yeah. You know, that sounds mm -hmm. like a perfect task for an outgoing president, an immediate mm -hmm. past president, mm -hmm. right? Because really, I, I can remember, it takes about a year to really figure out what you're supposed to be doing and by then your yeah. term yeah. is over, right? You're right, you're right. <laughs> and yeah. so this would be one way of before we put them out to pasture or before many of them take themselves out to pasture, right? We yeah. kind of give them a, a role for that year. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Benson brought up a good point when he mentioned Audrey Wilson, who has been in the club for a long time and she did, you know, she was the club trainer without knowing she was the club trainer. Mm -hmm. Even before mm -hmm. I was designated as a club trainer, I think for the past 12 years at least, what I would do is I would meet one-on-one -on -one with the president-elect. Mm -hmm. And then based on my experience, I would tell them, okay, fall training, you know, I would give them the, the pertinent events that they had to attend, um, fall training, pre-pets, pets, uh, district assemblies, or spring, spring and fall training, what that they call it now. Uh, and then also um, the costs associated, uh, the time associated with the events, so that they knew ahead of time to block their calendar for maybe not the specific day, but the period of time that they would need, I would tell them like, when you go to pets, you gotta get there by Thursday night. You're expected to stay the extra Sunday night and come back on Monday. Um, so they have a feeling of, okay, that's, that's what I have to do. That's the time I have to block off and then um, cost the club all for all pays for all training costs. But if you go to the district conference, that's on your own. You know, just things like that uh, helps them to plan their calendar uh, as far as not only for Rotary, but also personally, mm -hmm. you know, to block out that time. They know that they can't be away at a, at a certain time. Marianne, you sound like a perfect person to put together a template for the PEs for next mm -hmm. year. Yeah. <laughs> you would be ideal. Yeah. Okay, our our uh, room's going to go down here in about 40 seconds. So um, uh -oh. any, would anybody uh, else like to uh, say anything or um, would anybody like to volunteer to speak on our behalf when we get back in the main group? I nominate Mary. <laughs> you know, I wasn't taking notes. <laughs> okay, well, well, Marianne, you can speak. Kelly, you can speak. I mean, actually, any of you guys could speak. So when we get to that um, point, uh, I'll just say, um, "Hey, Marianne, you wanna you wanna uh, uh, speak about stuff that we talked about in our group?" I mean, I think that'd be my hand would hurt. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a good discussion. Sorry, I didn't get to um, go to every group. I, I got in a group and, you know, conversation was pretty, uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty riveting. So we were group one. So, uh, so why don't we start there? Uh, just kind of chat a little bit about the things that we talked about in the group. Um, you know, how our position as club trainer is being uh, viewed. Um, you know what? What can we do to uh, to help with the transition and, and leadership development? So, um, I think I think Marianne, we we volunteered her to talk in our, uh, about our group. Uh, so um, go ahead, Marianne. You can you can you can start off, and anybody can add into that if they want. Well, I'll start out with um, uh, number three. What is my role in the transition of leadership? Uh, what and then. From my personal experience for the past 
12, 10, 12 years or so, what I've done is each president elect, I've met with them one-on-one -on -one and told them, okay, this is what you're gonna have to expect. Uh, and this is to help you plan your, your upcoming calendar, uh, what you need to attend, the fall seminar uh, for your club grants qualification um, and uh, foundation seminar, your pre-pets, definitely pets, yes, um, the spring training, and I, I would throw in district conference. Um, the district conference would be the only personal cost, all the other uh, events, training events, the club, our club covers, um, just so that they can plan ahead of time their, uh, their rotary responsibilities and also to block out that time so that they, um, they know that they can't go on a vacation while pre-pets is scheduled or, you know, just basic things like that. Um, and Heather, Heather had a good uh, uh, answer to what can we do to stabilize membership. She mentioned um, their uh, club has a, a social at the last dinner. Um, the individual who was planning it noticed that there were a couple of individuals who had not been to the meetings lately. So they were the first ones to be contacted to go to the dinner. And fortunately they accepted and they had a great time. And you know, they, they were brought back into the fold of the club uh, because uh, they, for any reason they didn't attend uh, the meetings or they didn't attend the service projects. But when you see, when you notice certain people who aren't at the meetings a lot, then reach out to them specifically and make them feel like they're still part of the club and they'll get rejuvenated and come back to club meetings and maybe even participate in, in projects. Uh, as far as what do we need to do to elevate the position of club trainer in the club? Um, Kelly, I think you're, you had a, some good ideas on that. Do you wanna jump in? Yeah, I think the, the things that we talked a little bit about in the group was to really you know, um, help identify some of the key markers and activities, you know, surface them for the club as kind of a reminder of past success. Here's, you know, as Benson said at the beginning, uh, continuity is about behavior and behavior is culture. Um, you know, help, um, you know, help set up the plan, help build the transition, you know, starting, you know, in December, January as the, and help set the club's expectation for success to the new president elect. And then make sure, I think as uh, was animated in our group, you know, some of it's part of the nuts and bolts, the material, the personnel, the meetings, making sure that you're the partner and the go-to connector, you know, to make sure that nothing, you know, is going to fall through the cracks in, in, in terms of this transition, that it really is a, a way to sort of elevate the role by being, you know, that, that linker, you know, that, you know, is looking forward as well as looking back to keep uh, the club, you know, driving on, on goals. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Um, Keone, what happened in your group? Well, everybody had uh, different challenges. And I think yeah. that um, it was, uh, I think the challenges, but also opportunities. I know that um, uh, some folks had actually had more people starting to come to the meeting um, now yeah. that it's a Zoom virtual thing. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, we've kind of had a mix, um, you know, and, and then you know, people are shifting jobs now. A lot of people in our club are, are moving around, things are happening. So that when the ones that used to be able to make it now work, but I think like you said, continuity is tar it's hard when people um, you know, uh, someone mentioned that, um, uh, that, you know, we don't know if they're reading the newsletter, we don't know if they're keeping up with what's going on. So, you know, like when they do come, you know, three meetings later, they're, they got to catch up and they got to figure out what's going on and they're not sure what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, different, different, you know, different challenges, but I think that ultimately the, the continuity thing was important. I guess everybody felt like, and there's different ideas uh, coming up. Uh, one was, um, 
you know, just reaching for this book again and start pulling stuff out of here and just, you know, yeah. and just start throwing out, um, I think it was, uh, was it Mike uh, who had, uh, he was sending out emails ahead of the meeting, throwing out a question, a trivia question based on the information contained in this. And then anybody who had the answer had to send it to him before the, you know, before yeah. a certain time before the meeting. And then they would, they would put their name into a drawing to win a yeah. prize. Yeah. And so little things like that to keep people engaged, you know, to, to yeah. basically gamify the whole yeah. thing. So that's yeah. kind of, you know, making it yeah. fun. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I wanted to call, call out Mike, uh, uh, you want to comment on that? I, you know, Mike's in uh, uh, Rotary Club of Hilo Bay. I just spoke at their club meeting last week, and they're one of the most engaging clubs. In fact, um, you know, once the pandemic uh, broke out, their club actually just herded up like some buffalo, man, and they've got uh, tighter and more engaged than uh, than most of the clubs I've seen out there. Uh, you want to chat a, a bit about it, Mike? Well, and, and can only mention it. Literally, we're launching it this week is we sent everybody two weeks ago the Rotary Basics book because I, I pretty much figured out, unless you joined in 2014, we never gave it to members because it wasn't out there. Yeah. So everybody's got it. And so our, our normal meeting announcement to do it on Zoom is going to have a question that matches up with a door prize. <laughs> you you got to answer by dark on Tuesday, and it goes into a random number generator, and there you go. But it, yeah. it's just a way. It's so far, it, I, I got a lot of responses pretty quick, and they were some of our youngest, newest members, and, and one guy that's been in a president of clubs from Alaska to Arizona and just moved here. But there, so it, it's just a way to try and make training part of every meeting. So, well, that's awesome. Th yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. Um, hey, Jeff Pang, what about your group? You're in group three with uh, Arlene, Beth, Eva, and Wes. Where's Jeff Pang? He might be on mute. What, I, I took some notes for us. Okay, go ahead, Arlene. Um, so regarding the first question um, to elevate the position as club trainer in our club, um, there was a couple ideas of making the club trainer more visible at every meeting so that the club members are more familiar with them and they're, they're, they expect that. And also that the club trainer contributes to like a weekly newsletter, um, again, so that they're more visible. Um, an idea is to have the club trainer as a voting member and the club trainer to orientate board members. And I think that ties into the last one about my role as transition of leadership Mm -hmm. um, I know how Beth um, mentioned in her club that her, she as club trainer orientates board members and then she works with the membership chair to orientate the new members coming into the club as well. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And then to stabilize membership, um, a thing to do would be to survey membership to see um, what, what their wants and needs are. Mm -hmm. And to keep in contact with members, especially during this time with COVID and whatnot, you know, not everybody is able to do Zoom. So whether it's a call or an email, um, just keep in contact with everyone. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, keeping in contact, it's super great. Mm -hmm. um, so Chet, what about, uh, what about your group? That was group, group four. Um, it's our recorder. Oh, yeah. Who? Who was the recorder? Was Michelle, is that you? Yes, that was me. Yeah, so go for it. Go for it. I got kicked off my internet, but most of my notes <laughs> were centered around um, stabilizing membership, which is really interesting to me because I'm really new to Rotary. I just joined a few months ago. Awesome. But um, some All of the right. ideas. Yay. We, Yay. You know, some of the ideas we came up with were like a mentor mentee program where um, the mentee can introduce the new, or the mentor can introduce the mentee to different people in the club, introduce different positions they may have held, give the intricacies of what the club offers. So really love that idea. Another one was like a new membership booklet where every member, new or old, um, contributed like a slide and it gave a little about me, about their interests, their jobs, if they're retired, what they, what job they um, were in and did hold. And that way it's just a reminder of who people are outside of Rotary and then maybe spark some interest of different activities um, members can do outside of club hours. 
And then the last one was, um, the last idea was from Gail, which is really interesting is each member gives a classification that the club doesn't have. And then from there, each uh, Rotary member um, goes to their own network and tries to identify if there's somebody that fits that need and they can come in, give a little talk and introduction about what they do and then also be exposed to Rotary Club in general. So those are a few stabilizing ideas. Oh, Michelle, thanks a lot. That's great. Okay, so uh, uh, Alan Kamimoto, the last club is your, your group where, um, who was the recorder for your group or do you got, have somebody taking note? Let's see, where's Alan? Alan, are you in there? Oh, Alan, you gotta unmute yourself. There we go. Okay. Um, Good. Somebody from Ala Moana. What was his name? I'm sorry. Oh, Dave. Uh, let's see. Dave. Yeah. Dave, was it you? Were you the Were you the recorder for your? For he your was a moderator anyway. Okay. Well, I don't Dave? know that uh, that that could be. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. But anyways, go ahead Dave. Some of the ideas that came out in this group, of course, we have, you know, clubs that uh, span um, of a fairly large range in terms of mem membership. So, um, uh, for instance, in uh, in Lonnie's club, um, you know, there's basically seven active members, and everybody's. Uh, taking a, a turn at the wheel on almost everything in, in the jobs. Um, we, we kind of uh, came up with the um, expectation that a, a past president is going to be able to lend stature to the position of trainer. Um, and having that as a, as a routine uh, expectation would be, uh, uh, would be a good thing because they, they, uh, They've done most of the other roles in uh, in Rotary. Uh, they've been on the board. They should be retained on the board uh, if if that's possible. Um, the the trainer should. Uh, they they uh, in in a club. They should be able to uh, be involved in the um, uh, in the uh, stability of membership by trying to uh, fit members. Uh, two positions be part of the uh, uh, description of how uh, the onboarding of new members might go. I, I like the idea, but we didn't talk about it in terms of uh, uh, taking on the responsibility to take the uh, uh, president designee and, and or, or president elect and, and kind of run them through their paces. Um, the idea was uh, uh, forwarded as far as uh, uh, organizing uh, vocational talks so that <clears throat> each of the uh, each of the club members, especially in small clubs, could um, could give a uh, a small uh, talk within the meetings to to describe what they do. Because I know that in a uh, uh, club as as big as ours, it's about 160 right now. Uh, there's a lot of new members that don't really understand. Uh, what some of the uh, the more experienced members do, or or how they contribute. So that was a an idea that came out, and also that the uh, trainer be very much involved in the uh, the making of the strategic plan, and uh, be yes. involved in um, in that process with the uh, uh, with the president Lex, and involving as many members as possible in it. And I'm sure there's some ideas I've forgotten, Paul or Alan or yeah. Lonnie, but you can add those. Yeah. Hey, thanks that was a good recap. Dave. Yeah, good, good one, Dave. Thank you, thank you, Alan. Uh, so uh, uh, Gary just put in the chat that he's looking for the links to pre previous club trainer Zoom recordings. So we're gonna make sure we dig those up and uh, post them um, on the district uh, website. Uh, remember, we have a training. Uh, library, with this, uh, which is a uh, plethora of resources for you guys to use. And of course, as always, uh, myself, you can email me, call me, um, uh, Naomi as well, and Sandy as well. So uh, <clears throat> we're right at 8 o'clock, or actually 8.01. I want to thank you for your time today. Um, you know, spend an, an hour with us because you're dedicated to Rotary. 
So if there's anything else that you need or would like to talk about, uh, you're welcome to hang on, but um, uh, that is the end of our session tonight. Uh, next session, February 15th, it's always the third Monday of the month. I'll send you a reminder um, when we're gonna meet again. So uh, thanks a lot. Like I said, if you wanna um, hang around afterwards and chat, you're welcome to do so. I'll be on for a little bit uh, or put something in the chat. But uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate your guys being here. All right. All right. Have a good one, guys. Okay. No problem. Oh, Ben, so I had a question for you. Now I forget. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I know what it was, Benson. I know, so I know. can I, I um, with, with a basic Zoom plan, can I do polling? Because I've done upgrades to webinar. Uh, uh, I had to use a webinar. Uh, you know, they have different levels of Zoom, right? So I, yeah. I upgraded for a month for something else. And then it gave me all kinds of cool tools. But of course, when that webinar expired, it went back to my regular baseline zoom yeah. can you do polls in the base one yeah i don't that's think so. what you paid you for you, you paid i mean for that it. it's the paid one right i mean you cannot do them you cannot do one in the free one. Oh no yeah. i bought one but i just when i go down to my tools the polling option isn't there so you, i was looking online for tech support settings yeah. oh, that? go to settings yeah okay i'll look again okay uh the reason yeah because I, I was thinking that what we could do is uh i could pre i could brief you know yeah. pre-fill some polls out ahead of time and that way yep. during right during meetings keep things interesting okay just just from a feel like especially when people yeah. start talking about uh working in a certain area you guys yeah. want to work on kilani ave why lua you want to hear just put it up there and just see where the numbers come out and, oh, we log yeah. it and just keep track and yeah, just kind yeah. of like get an idea of what people want to do and everyone says yeah let's go do this street then you feel like sometimes you say it and then people don't want to say it because they you mm -hmm. know if someone's real vocal everybody yeah. would just jump on the bandwagon but if they can yeah. answer in secret <laughs> it'll kind of show on the you know they can kind of click on it and it'll you know so i'm trying to figure out ways of adding yeah. or using the questions like uh you know throwing out rotary basics questions out by polls and the, yeah. you know whoever can answer i guess the people who get it right you know maybe get yeah i don't know something yeah, yeah anyway it, yeah yeah in our club meetings we used to do rotary minute yeah right they were just i brought that up yeah. in our group session too is that you mentioned that and nomi and i you and i were talking about that last time that i think that i just need to identify yeah. the individuals that can speak well, the problem for us is that when, if I if I cut some of them loose, it's going to be a rotary ten minute. So because <laughs> you know you cut some of these old guys loose, man. Yeah. Hey, it's like give them, the, give them yeah. the mic and it's over. Yeah, yeah. talk about yeah. you know right yeah. for end of the meeting all. already. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's right. over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. hey, Benson, yeah. Benson, I really enjoy these club trainer meetings. You know, uh, thank you, Alex. Guys like thank us, you. we've been around a long time. I mean, a long <laughs> oh. time. But you know, you always learn stuff from other people, which is yeah. really a good. I, I, yeah. I, I, this is the best, best webinar I attend because you know there's so much dialogue, so many new ideas, especially young, young. Uh, yeah, new it was members. great, great, great to see that. Great yeah, uh, Michelle Lowe on the call today. Uh, she's already in the trainer meeting. She's only been on Taryn for a couple of months. I mean, yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I love, I love, love, love seeing those guys. So, yeah. Um, good job. Thank, yeah, thank you, Alan. Uh, yeah, really, uh, really appreciate it. So. Um, uh, you know, Doug, while uh, you're on and then Mike's on, um, <clears throat> we have, we got an inquiry today from the Department of Health. They're going to set up um, a reservation center for the uh, vaccine at Auntie Sally's. And they're wanting to see if uh, Rotary can provide volunteers to man the phones. Uh, nine, nine to three, I'll send you a thing out, but I, I just wanted to throw that out. And, and you guys that are in other areas, uh, it might be something that uh, the Department of Health is doing in other areas of the state where they're mm. setting up like a volunteer phone bank to take um, reservations for the 75 plus guys to get their vaccination. So, mm. <clears throat> so what I was uh, talking with Eric Honda today, uh, Doug, and he was saying, yeah, we got them all socially distanced and, uh, you know, in, um, out at Auntie Sally's and uh, they got two shifts, nine to 12 and 12 to three, so. I'll, I'll send you something, uh, Mike. I'll send it to uh, uh, Lorraine and then into all the Hilo clubs because they're looking for uh, for people to help volunteer. So, but um, good. yeah, good. Thanks. You, uh, you and I, you and I have something else to talk about too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's the hint for us to get off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Yeah. You no, guys can stay on as long as you want. It's just that at the end of the day, <laughs> you're still going to be talking about something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. You're right. Cause you're right. I did contact you today. God, I like text so many people. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, so oh, Gail, Gail, you have templates to send over? I can post it or send it to T Benson first and then I and we can post it. Benson has had it for a while. Oh, My remember question I, remember was, I, where yeah. are the three files? They're still not in the club trainer folder. Yeah, remember those oh, are the, the ones that I sent you. Yeah, those are oh, the ones that I sent you, Naomi. Oh, that's the orient member orientation one. Yeah, yeah, the okay. orientation. I did, I did send it to Naomi, so. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. I was asked in, in our breakout session, Benson, where are those three files that you were talking about? And I said, I'm going to ask Benson again. Okay. Because people are looking for them in the club trainer folder. Okay. Uh, well, we'll make them there. I'll, I'll get the, uh, I'll get the, uh, the club uh, poster person on it. So post them there. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Hey, oh, my goodness. Beth Hoban is in the house. Beth. Hey, Beth. Beth, are you, Beth, are, are you, you lying okay? in bed? Are you lying in I, bed? No, my Wi-Fi on my computer died, so I had to uh, use my uh, this this phone. And I'm trying to get the gallery on my iPhone, and I can't seem to do it. Oh, I yeah. Single, Hard to do. Yeah, single images. Yeah, Jim's working on the Wi-Fi. Kaniohi, you know, yeah. we lost our Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Still still raining over there, Beth. You guys still yeah, raining. Yeah, it's raining in our oh, side. Man. Yep. That's yeah, that's pouring over here on Kailua side. Yeah. Very wet. Yeah. Yeah. Really. really. Well, I was at Diamond Head hiking Diamond Head yesterday. And it was beautiful. Really? Man, it was wow. sunny. It's crazy sun. I, I couldn't yeah. believe it. It was gonna rain all day. I got there. It was like hot and sunny. Would it be? Would it? Would not be nice today. So. No, wow. they. Lucky when we yeah. said the whole island chain is gonna be just inundated with lots of rain and lots of wind for several days. <laughs> yeah. You know, while we're all together, yep. is the district conference going to be a virtual one or physical one? Uh, uh, right now, we're still hoping for um, in person. So um, it, once uh, Rotary makes the decision on Taipei, if they go totally virtual, then we'll consider going virtual too. Um, but we'll check with um, uh, Hilton on that too. So we, we might still be lucky and have it in person. We'll see. Well, by that time, we'll probably have our vac our second vaccine. So, yep. <clears throat> well, let's let's hope. Let's hope we yep. can. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, Benson. Thank okay. you. Okay. Guys. Thank you for having these meetings. Appreciate all the effort that goes into them. Yeah. See you next month. Aloha. Okay. Thank you guys. See you guys for Bye. See you. Bye. Oh, Keone, that's you. Wow, you look in top shape, bro. So. Okay. Okay. Have fun, yeah. Doug and Benson. All right. Yeah. We'll see. I'm Let's dying see. to stay and listen in though, but okay. Yeah, we'll put it in. Listen. We'll put it in the chat. Yeah. We'll, we'll, <laughs> it's gonna be it's being recorded. So it'll yeah. be like oh, a part oh, of yeah, yeah. Okay. oh wow, yeah. You know, I didn't stop the recording. Yeah.